Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. It's Tom Meckler speaking from Bosch Security Systems, and today's webinar is all about selling intrusion into commercial applications. We appreciate your participation today. I hope everyone is seeing the screen. You should see a title screen. And now you should see an agenda with a picture of me. That picture is a couple years old. I still look a little bit like that, but I'm a little grayer. So pretend I look like that. What we're going to cover today is, is Bosch Security Systems as a commercial provider and some of the things that we've learned over the years uh, about serving the commercial, at, the commercial market using our intrusion products. We'll talk about some specific application solutions. We'll go over some of our intrusion control panels and other intrusion products and talk about some peripherals. Now some housekeeping items. Please submit any questions you have using the chat box. That's the thing that has this little icon on it that looks like a, you know, a, a, a voice box out of a cartoon. Everyone's lines are muted, and that's to provide a clear audio for all. I'm sure we've all been on webinars before where we heard somebody's dog bark or the toilet flush or whatever, and we want to avoid those types of things. So we've muted all the lines, and we will be recording this video, and that recording will be made available after the webinar. So if you miss anything, don't worry about it. If you want to share this with your friends and family, you'll have the opportunity to do that later on. So with no further ado, let's talk about Bosch Intrusion Solutions and the commercial market. And, and one big part of the commercial market, of course, is retail. You may not be aware that Bosch Intrusion products are, are the standard for 40 out of the top 100 U.S. retailers. That's about 80,000 locations today. All 10 of the top U.S. retailers it's from the Fortune 500 list standardize on Bosch security systems. And this is no secret. All you have to do is walk into one of these stores or these locations and look around for the keypad. I'll alarm people do these things. I know I do. You'll see our keypad on the wall. Now, that's not to boast and say, hey, we're great and all of those kinds of things. What that really is all about to say is we've had these customers for a long time. We understand their needs. We've had specific requests from those customers that we have put into our product designs. So we really do know the commercial market and we've learned over the years what customers need and how to fulfill those needs. So when we talk about Bosch and commercial, you know, that first slide really was about retail. But Bosch panels are used in more than 600,000 commercial applications in the U.S. And quite honestly, that's probably a conservative number. We're, we're much closer to a million applications in the U.S. And those applications include retail, of course, commercial facilities and office buildings, financial, banking, education, government, and military. Now, why is that important? What we have found is while there are certainly some things that are specific to a certain vertical, for example, banking or education or retail, there are many similarities as well across commercial applications when we talk about these different verticals. And to really bring that down to a basic, to a very simple definition, Commercial applications really share a lot of similarities. One is that they have multiple access points. There's lots of doors and windows. There are many facilities that access is free to the public. Of course, in a retail store, of course, in a school, there are times of day when people can just come and go. All these facilities have clients or customers or patients or students present that need to be protected. There's times when nobody should be there in a lot of these applications, and there's some level of risk, although it may be different, there's some level of risk day and night. So we're gonna talk about how to solve some of these uh, challenges. 
this chart, there's an awful lot of data on this chart, but what this chart really is, is showing is that there are a lot of different features and lots of capabilities that we've it, it de, invented or designed for different applications, but those same features and capabilities can be used in other applications. And if there's an X on the right side of this chart, I know for a fact that there is a customer in that particular vertical that is using that feature, whether it be special monitoring features, which we'll talk about, combination intrusion and fire systems, which we'll talk about. Although we may have done something or invented a feature for a specific vertical, it may be used in other verticals as well. And that's good news for you because if you're a customer or you're an installer that focuses on the retail market, but you get the opportunity to install a system in a school or a bank or a government location, many of the features that you're used to using in your retail sales can be adapted to be used in those other applications as well. The most obvious and the most simple application for commercial uh, solutions are perimeter doors. They're the most obvious place for someone to break into a building. That's where they're going to walk in. That's where they're going to break in as well. And there's a lot of things we can do to protect perimeter doors. In addition to if the burglar breaks in, the sirens go off, right? Well, one of the things we can do is ensure that those doors have not been inadvertently propped open during the day. We've all done this, right? You go out to your car and, and you you got your keys and you know that door is going to lock behind you. So what you do is you stick a brick or a stick or a board or something in that door so you don't have to use your key or your access control to get back in. You go out to your car, you do what you, you get what you need, you come back in and you forget that you left that brick in the door. Well, now the perimeter of that building is breached. It's open and anybody can just walk right in through a door that's been propped open. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could alert to someone that that door has been propped open? Now, this isn't a case where no one can ever use that door to exit or enter. That's okay if they use it, but you don't want it to be left open because that leaves it unprotected. In an access control system, we use a feature called door propped. And what door prop does is exactly that. It alerts you to the fact that a door has been propped open. But not every door in a building has access control. Not every door in a building has electronic locks. Some of them are just a simple lock with a handle like this one. Well, Bosch panels have a feature called monitor delay and delay response that allows us to monitor those doors during disarmed periods to see if they've been propped open. So you can program a time that says it's okay for this door to be open for 30 seconds, for example. But if it's open longer than 30 seconds, I'd like to send a local alert, maybe a text to the building manager or the school principal. And I'd like to send a report that says, hey, this door has been propped open. And perhaps I want to make some noise at the keypad to alert folks near the door. They need to go close it. And all these things help ensure a safer environment because it makes sure that somebody goes over and closes that door. And that perimeter, which has been breached, is now secure again. Another feature and another challenge with commercial applications, you know, you walk around a commercial building, whether it's a department store or school or a, or, or a building like I'm in here, an office building, there's a lot of doors that aren't supposed to ever be used unless there's an emergency. Those emergency doors, right? You know, do not press, do not open door or alarm will sound. This is a fire exit only. Those doors are there for a reason. And they're there for an emergency event. Somebody needs to get out. But if somebody uses that door during the day when there's not an emergency, you want to know they're not supposed to be using that door, especially if it's the restaurant and they're doing a, a dine and dash or it's the store and they've just stolen the, the merchandise and they want to run out the back door. You want an alarm. Very simple. We put a 24-hour point or a 24-hour programming on that door. So anytime that door opens, there's an alarm. 
Well, we can handle that in a couple different ways. One, of course, is that anytime someone opens the door, we make noise, we activate a siren, we send a report to the monitoring center. But that might not make sense if the building is occupied. Maybe you don't want that to be sent to the monitoring center. Maybe you just want a local alert. You want a local alarm. So we can actually program a door so that if the system is armed and someone opens the door, you get an alarm. If the system is not armed and somebody opens the door, it's only a local alarm that's not transmitted to the central station but makes noise locally. So that's great because it allows you to alert people within the building that someone's using a door they shouldn't use without dispatching the police, which may not be necessary during the day. Another tip when it comes to these emergency doors and those local alarms, that's making noise. And you're in a retail environment or you're in a commercial environment and noise is, noise is annoying, right? It's supposed to be, it's supposed to wake you up. We have customers who actually use our wireless system to control that sound, that siren. So I'll give you an example. There's a local kids play place. It has, you know, it's an indoor playground. There's jumpy and climb, climby things and, and slime you can play with and, and all those things that kids love. Well, they have to have emergency doors in there in case there's some type of an emergency, but they don't want to have that kid run out the door and run out into the woods. So they have those doors monitored all day long. So if somebody opens a door, it's going to activate a siren. The siren is going to scare the children. So once this, the manager realizes that the child just prop pushed the door a little bit and didn't run out into the woods, they'd like that siren to shut off as soon as possible. By carrying a wireless key fob with them throughout the day, they don't have to run back to the keypad to silence that alarm. They can simply push a button and the alarm is silenced. It's an extra tip and it's something that not a lot of people think of, but it's an extra way to use wireless in a commercial application that makes it more convenient for the user. So what's another problem with emergency doors? And fire marshals love this one. Emergency doors are for emergencies, right? They're there for a reason. And we want to make sure that people can access those doors and get out if they need to. What if somebody puts a pile of boxes or puts a, a pallet in front of those doors? That's a problem because people can't access the door, right? Well, our cameras, our video cameras, actually have video analytics that allow you to tell if an object has been left behind or if there has been, uh, you know, something left behind in front of that door. In addition, our IP cameras can integrate with our alarm panels so that they can connect and cause some sort of alert, whether it's a report to the monitoring center or a local alarm. Those things can be activated from that camera. So you can actually integrate one of our IP cameras into the alarm panel that says if there's something in front of that door that's blocking access to the door, I want to activate an alert locally. I want to send a report so somebody can react here and move that something so that we, you know, we have a safe emergency door for our occupants. So I see through the chat here that there's a little problem with the audio. And I apologize for that. We're moving some things around, moving microphones and such, and, and hopefully that noise goes away. So uh, let us know if we, if we get that resolved. And I apologize for that. So other types of exterior doors or dock doors or overhead doors. Boy, an awful lot of commercial applications have overhead doors. They're at the warehouse in this facility here. This is a distribution center, so it's all overhead doors, right? One of the things that we have, one of the problems that we have with overhead doors is, again, they've been left open too long. You need to open up the door because you need to empty the truck and you need to fill the truck. So you need some time there, but you don't want to leave that door open if no one is making a delivery or a pickup. There's all kinds of bad things that can happen if that door is open. 
Uh, there's safety concerns. Somebody could walk out the door and fall off the dock. That's a problem. There's security concerns. The bad guy can just walk in. Uh, other concerns like birds flying in that might cause the types of problems that birds cause when they fly around and, and leave parts of themselves on, you know, we won't go there. There's problems about simple heating and air conditioning. So imagine you're in Rochester this week where we are. It's going to be two here on Tuesday or on Thursday. It's two degrees and you have that door open. You're just pumping heat out the door. So you want to close it. You just want to make sure the door is closed when it's supposed to. This is another reason for monitor delay, which is a feature that allows us to notify someone if that door has been left open. And a nice feature about monitor delay is that it can be programmed for different times. So this overhead door can be 15 minutes or so, or 30 minutes, it's actually up to an hour, that it can be open without activating an alert. But that emergency door that we showed before, or that normal door that's on the side of the building, that really is only supposed to be open for about 30 seconds. So we offer the flexibility to handle both types of applications. One of the things that we often we often get into this wormhole of of boy we uh, we or pigeonhole rather of all we worry about is burglar alarms. A burglar breaks in, the sirens go off, we send the police. But we don't think about other things within the facility that need to be monitored. Several years ago, we had a workshop with some of the largest retailers and some of the largest grocery store chains in the U.S. And we asked them what their biggest concerns were. And the burglar breaking in and the panic alarm going off and those types of events were not at the top of their list. The top of their list were maintaining, maintaining their, uh, their stock and maintaining the, sorry, I'm getting a button on my screen that I had to shut off. Maintaining the integrity of their stock. So, for example, this, this freezer with all these fish sticks and French fries and all the stuff in there, if you did the math, there's probably $10,000 worth of stuff in that freezer. And if that freezer goes beyond a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, that stock needs to be removed, needs to be thrown away. That's a real problem for a retailer. They'd like to know if that freezer or that refrigerator gets beyond a certain temperature. Well, there are systems, of course, that can monitor that, and there are systems that do that. But we can actually connect to those systems so that we can provide a report or make a noise or alert someone that they need to react before they, they have a whole freezer full of fish sticks that they need to throw away. And that monitor delay feature, boy, that comes into play in a lot of different ways, right? That allows us to work through temperature a fluctuation so that we don't have a bunch of false alarms. So thinking about commercial applications, think about big buildings, there's lots of different types of rooms or different types of locations throughout these facilities. And in this application, you know, we're showing a big, you know, mega store here. For the most part, this building is open to the public. You can go wherever you want. But there's some areas that need to be armed or controlled differently than other parts of the building. The manager's office, the cash office, the IT room. Now let's put that into perspective when we're looking at a school, the principal's office, the labs. Let's look at an office building, the server room. There are certain places throughout any building that you want to be able to control differently. And by using area control, which means that some areas are armed and some areas are disarmed at different times of day, and different users have access to different areas at different times of day, that's a feature that can be used in every commercial application. There's always some place where they want a little extra security. Even in a small application, it might be the warehouse, it might be where they where they keep the safe, those types of applications. So you want to look for a system that allows multiple areas to be controlled by users, and you want to look for a system that has some flexibility there.
Another challenge in especially retail applications is protecting high value or sensitive merchandise. Think of a cell phone store, for example, and all of the value that is in those cell phones, these tiny little boxes with, you know, iPhones that are $1,000 and iPads and tablets, etc. Those are tightly controlled. And oftentimes, for example, in a cell phone store, we have a cage that's locked. So all the heavy, the, the really expensive stuff is in that cage. And that cage is only accessible if there's a manager on duty. So if I'm an assistant manager, or I'm just you know opening the store for, for the day, I can get in and turn on the lights and unlock the doors and start serving customers, but I can't get into that cage without the high, with the high value in, merchandise in it unless a manager is on site. So I go to swipe my token to get into that cage because let's say it's controlled with access control, but I can't get in until the manager has come in and they swipe their token. Now it is disarmed. Now it's allowed for me to go in there as well. This is a feature that comes along with a system that has integrated intrusion and access control. So when we integrate the intrusion and access control within the system, it allows us to provide controls in certain ways that can add security and add convenience as well makes it very simple to solve this problem. So if I'm selling into an application like a cell phone store where I have high value merchandise that's only supposed to be accessed if there's a manager on site, this system makes that very easy to do. Think about that for a pharmacy where we have drug storage, class two narcotics that need to be controlled. They can only be opened if a pharmacist is on site. It's the same application, it's just different, different users. And again, that's a feature that comes with, the, with having intrusion and access integrated into the same system. Another way that we can protect high value merchandise is we can actually put contacts, we can actually detect access to parts of the building you normally wouldn't think of. So for example, this lady wants to look at that necklace, right? She really likes it. So if I open up that case to let her see that necklace, that case is open. What if I put a contact on that case that allows us to monitor to make sure the case isn't open? Typically, I open that case, I let her look at the necklace. Now, what if I forget to close it? Somebody can reach in and grab the bracelet and run off and nobody's going to see them. So I don't want that case to be open for longer than maybe 20, 30 seconds. Again, I can use that monitor delay and delay response to monitor that case. And we've had requests from large merchandisers, from large retailers to do exactly that on jewelry cabinets, gun storage, ammunition storage, all those types of applications. And again, let's talk about the pharmacy, the class two drugs. I need to get into the class two drugs because I need to fill a prescription, but I don't want to leave that cabinet open. So it's okay to be open for a few seconds, but if it's open for longer than say two minutes, I want to know. And what it allows you to do is, is let your customers run their business, let your customers do what they need to do to serve their customers without putting a lot of burden on them for security. This just kind of happens in the background and provides a nice high level of security without burdening their everyday business. Another way to protect high value areas, and this is a feature that we actually made for a bank, and it's called area rearm. What happens is you know, we need to service an ATM. If I, I own a bank and I have an ATM, the money just doesn't print in the ATM. Somebody needs to load it. Somebody needs to load the paper for the receipts. Somebody needs to take out the deposits. So someone needs to service that ATM on a regular basis. Because of that, the ATM is secured. There, there's, a, there's a closet, there's a box that's armed all the time and needs to be disarmed in order to access the ATM. 
What if I disarm it, I do my thing, I do my service, and then I leave, but I forgot to arm it? Well, this happens. You might not believe it, but this happens quite a bit. And when that happens, the ATM is left secure. There are tens of thousands of dollars that are not armed. That's a problem. So what we do is we actually can program a feature so that that area will be rearmed automatically after a certain amount of time. Let us, let's say it's 45 minutes or an hour or half an hour, whatever makes sense for that particular application. It's not like auto arm, which you're probably familiar with the auto arm feature where systems can arm at the same time every day. This is an amount of time, not a time of day. So it doesn't matter when that service technician goes in and services that ATM or when the armored car comes and loads the money and takes the money out. It's only going to be disarmed for a certain amount of time and it's going to be armed when it needs to be. So that's a neat feature you can add. And again, even though we invented this for banks, other customers can use it as well. Any place that needs to be armed most of the time, it isn't accessed very often, and boy, you don't want it to be left disarmed for very long. The IT room, the server room, we have customers that are using this for the service sheds, for cell phone towers. Any area like that, that you want to make sure is armed, that doesn't get access very often. Another high security feature is the ability to require two people to disarm an area or disarm a building. There are many applications, high-end security and not so high-end security. Some, some stores, some smaller retailers who say, I need two people to be here in order to open the store. I need two people to be here to in order to open the, the vault or the IT room. By adding that feature electronically, it makes it easier to control access to that facility and it lets the customer run their business the way that they want to. They want two people to be there. That's how it's supposed to work. This automates that for them and makes sure that it works properly. It won't let anybody in unless there's two. Dual authentication. This is another way to protect high value locations, high value merchandise. And what it does is it requires you to have something you know and something you have in order to access the area. So think about when you go to the ATM and you want to get money out. Something you know and something you have. You have your ATM card and you know your PIN. So that's something you know and something you have. This puts that capability into an alarm system. So by, act, by activating dual authentication, it requires that someone can present their credential or their card and enter a passcode in order to open up the vault, open up the ATM, open up a government skiff, open up the building in general. So that just adds a higher level of security. Here's a feature that we invented for a bank. And what it's called is early ambush. I'm going to tell you a little story about how someone opens a bank and that really equates to other applications as well. So in a lot of applications, a lot of banks, the way that that works is in the morning when the manager comes to open up the bank, they unlock the door, they let themselves in, they turn off the alarm system, they lock the door behind them and then they take a walk around the bank to make sure that the bad guys haven't broken in during the night to ambush them and take all the money. Then after they make sure everything's okay, they'll open a certain blind, they'll turn on a certain light so that others who other employees of the bank know that it's okay to go in that day. So if Tom's car is in the parking lot and the blind's still down, I'm supposed to wait until I see the blind go up. When the blind goes up, I know Tom's okay and I know I can go to work. If the blind's down, but Tom's car is in the parking lot, I'm supposed to wait. And if the blind doesn't go up in 10 minutes, I'm supposed to leave and call the police. That's something that banks actually do and, and it's, it's, a, it's a way that they protect their employees. 
Early ambush is a feature that automates that. What it does is it requires a passcode to be entered twice. So that when I open the bank or I open this area, I enter my passcode, I walk around and make sure everything's okay. And then I go back and I enter my passcode again. If I don't get back and enter my passcode again, it generates a duress event. It sends a duress code to the monitoring center. Why might I not be able to enter my passcode again? Well, maybe because the bad guys were waiting for me inside the bank or the store or whatever. Or maybe they were waiting for me in the parking lot. You know, alarm systems have had a duress feature for a long time where, you know, when I let myself in, I use my passcode. It's one, two, three, four. But if somebody's got a gun to my head and is making me disarm the system, then it's one, two, three, five, or it's nine, one, one, one. It's some different code. Well, try to remember that code when somebody's got a gun to your head, right? So the way this works, so early ambush can be used for that first application where somebody's walking around the building. It can also be used for someone who's been ambushed on their way in. If they don't enter that code the second time, it's going to send a duress code automatically. And this, again, is for a high security application. You're not going to put this on every application, but for those applications that you, you think are at high risk or high security, that's where you're going to add this feature. Now we're going to talk about convenience. And how can I access my system? How can I make it easier to operate my system? Well, one of the features Bosch panels have is a feature called remote security control. What it is is our app for smartphones that allows you to arm and disarm the system remotely. So you can connect from the other side of town and, and arm and disarm your system, right? What that allows me to do, let's say I'm the area manager for a bunch of donut shops and I want to make sure that they're all armed at night and I get a signal that one of them across town has not been armed. Well, what do I do? Well, in the old days, I'd drive across town and arm the system and drive back home. But when I have a remote app like Remote Security Control, I can take out my app connect to the system. I can look at cameras that are within the facility and make sure everything's okay. Yep, they just forgot to arm, and I can arm the system without ever getting off the couch. So that's a really nice feature. The other thing that we can do with, with remote connections is we can send notifications separately from the central station. So obviously, if there's an alarm, you want the alarm to go to the central station, and you want somebody to respond. But if someone forgot to arm the system or they left the door open or they forgot to disarm the system because they got out of bed late today, that can be just a text that gets sent to the store manager or other personnel so that they can respond to that. So here's that application of, hey, here's the store manager and they're notified that, that someone forgot to arm their system and they're on the other side of town. So rather than driving all the way, they can just pull out their, their, their cell phone or their smartphone and activate uh, the system from there, which is a very cool thing. Some of the advantages of the way that Bosch handles this with remote security control, we don't have a third party server. Our app connects directly to the panel, whether it's using cellular or IP to connect. You can view IP cameras as long as they're a Bosch camera that's been integrated so you can see what's going on before you take any actions. Multiple users per panel, multiple panels per user. What that means is, it, again, if I'm responsible for 12 donut, donut shops, I can actually have an account for each one of those and connect to them independently. And someone else maybe I have an assistant manager, I can give them access as well. So any user of the system in a Bosch panel can also use their smartphone to connect to that system, up to hundreds of users in our bigger, in our bigger panels. And their access is limited to the same access they would have at the keypad. It allows me to control outputs and access doors so I can actually unlock a door for someone if I want to. And I can arm the system by area so remember that chart we showed earlier of just the areas and, and how the building was split up into multiple areas? Well, I can arm just a particular area. I can also arm perimeter only from the app. So if I'm at my desk 
and it's getting late at night, I really would like all the doors and windows to be armed. I can go to my app and arm just the perimeter. I don't have to walk over to a keypad to do that. So how do you connect to the panel? Well, in, in today's world, of course, we're doing this over cellular. We're doing it over IP. Well, Bosch has a way to simplify that. And what, what that's called is Remote Connect. A Remote Connect service uses the Bosch cloud to simplify connectivity. So all new Bosch B panels, so the, the B8512, the B6512, and I'll show you a chart of the panels that we're talking about a little later on, come out of the factory with a cloud certificate, which means that they are programmed to connect directly to our cloud. And if you have a cloud account, you can use that remote control to connect to the panel like we just talked about, arm and disarm areas. If you're the installer, you can use that to connect and make changes to the programming, to add and delete passcodes. And because it uses the cloud, as far as the panel is concerned, it's always an outbound communication. So that eliminates the need for the installer to program for port forwarding. There's no static IP addresses required. And it reduces conflicts and delays with the site IT department. When you don't have to get into someone's network, when everything is coming out of someone's network, they like you a lot more. When you, as soon as you say, oh, I need to get in and do this, the, the hair on the back of the IT guy's neck you know, rises up and you're going to have some challenges. So Cloud Connect makes that much easier. <clears throat> So I want to talk for a moment about personal notification. And we talked about this a little earlier. Bosch panels have the ability to send personal notifications in one of two ways. One is a text and one is, for, and one is an email. The nice thing about that is you can select which types of events to send in which way. So you're always going to send an alarm to the monitoring center. If you have an alarm, the whole idea of the security system is that someone else is going to help, someone else is going to respond to a critical event. But for non-critical events, we can communicate those in other ways. We can send you a text on an alarm, and that's a good thing because it allows you to know as soon as the monitoring center does that you have that alarm and you can start to react to it. But we can also send emails. So for example, if someone arms the system when they're supposed to, someone disarms the system when they're supposed to, you might not really care that much. You don't want that to show up as a text or somebody to call you that everything's okay, but you'd like to be able to see that later. So the system can actually send you an email and you can look at your email to see that that event has occurred and it occurred when it was supposed to and the person who was supposed to do it did it at the right time. So you might ask, well, I get 100 emails a day. I don't want to have extra emails. So I don't really like that feature. Well, one of the things you can do is actually create a separate email address just for this. So for example, you see Bosch email reports at gmail.com on this chart here. That's an email account I created. And the only thing that has ever emailed it has been my demo kit, my alarm panel. So let's go back to that donut shop guy. And donut shop guy has 12 donut shops and he can actually set up, you know, Tom's donut shops, you know, at gmail.com and all the emails from all the donut shop alarm systems are going to that location. Now later I can go through and see, okay, these were armed properly. These were disarmed properly. You know, why was this guy late? Those kinds of things are built into the system. And then for, events that might be a little more critical like someone forgot to arm the system someone forgot to disarm the system someone left the door open that i might want to get a text for so the system allows you to split those things in into events so i can respond now to the events i need to respond to and check later for the ones that i don't ip camera integration this is an important feature with bosch panels and what it allows you to do is integrate up to six Bosch IP cameras with your system. 
you might be thinking, well, wait, I thought it was 16 cameras. That's with one of our higher end systems. And in, in, in this chart, we're talking about our systems that are also available for distribution up to our B6512, which supports up to six IP cameras. And what this is, is a direct machine to machine connection, which connects the camera to the alarm panel. It allows the camera to send commands or events to the alarm panel and it allows the panel to send commands or events to the camera. Well, what's all that mean? Let's talk about that camera connected to the panel. And again, Bosch cameras have a very high level of video analytics. It allows us to detect things like a truck is backing up to the dock. Someone has left something in front of the fire door. Someone's here and they shouldn't be. Outdoor motion detection, for example, is a great feature of these high-end cameras with that uh, video analytics. By connecting that to the alarm panel, now we can take advantage of all the things that an alarm panel is good at, like sending reports and making noise and making sure that someone responds in the way that they're supposed to. So this allows that camera, which has its video analytics capability, to take a step above and send reports to the alarm panel so that it can be reacted to. Now the cameras aren't dedicated to this particular function. Hey, I'm getting a, a error that from Denise it says there's no audio. Did, uh, did all the audio go away? Oh, so Billy, thanks Billy. Billy still has audio. So I'm gonna keep talking. Gotta love that chat feature. So this is a feature that is, it doesn't take that camera and devote it to the alarm function. The camera is still a camera and it's still working with its recording or with its video management system. This is a feature that is in addition to that. One of my favorite parts of this feature is system integrity. So our cameras know if they've been blocked, if someone spray paints that dome, if they've been pointed the wrong way, they know that. And that can actually be activated as a tamper alarm to the alarm panel so that you can go respond to that tamper event now before the bad guy comes and empties the warehouse. So what can the panel tell the camera to do? Well, the panel can activate an alarm and put on the camera and if the panel has an alarm input act or the camera has an alarm input activated it can do things like send a snapshot it can do things like send an alarm verification event through Bosch's cloud-based services to the monitoring center so that we can uh, have a alarm event that is tied to the video schedule control the panel has a schedule in it, so it can control things by time of day, but also by system condition. So is the system armed or not? Because if it's armed, nobody's supposed to be here. And if it's disarmed, it's okay if people are here. As simple as that. Well, if nobody's supposed to be here, I want the camera to react differently than if someone is supposed to be here. For example, if someone is approaching the front of my building at 3 o'clock in the morning and nobody's supposed to be here, I've been closed since 8, I'd like something to happen. Turn on a light, play a message, tell them to come back during business hours, whatever, so that person knows they've been detected and maybe I scare them away. But during the day, during business hours, I don't want to scare my customers away, so I want the camera to react differently. So by arming and disarming the panel, which I'm going to do anyhow, I can take that input and over a network connect to my camera and tell it when people are supposed to be here or not, and then it can react in a different way. Integration with uh, the video management system. So Bosch also has a video management system, the BVMS, the Bosch Video Management System. It's also in several of our NVRs. And what this allows us to do is integrate the alarm panel into our BVMS, into our video management system, so you can get command and control of the alarm system. So I can arm and disarm areas. I can lock and unlock doors. It gives me a head-on display. So if there's an alarm in an area, it can pop up on that, 
on that map and show me where it is. Event interaction, when someone lets themselves in by disarming the system or activating their, their access card, it can bring up video to correlate with that event. And we support up to 20 panels per server, so this can actually work in a very, very large system. So if I, I hope that what we've done is open up your mind a little bit to some of the different applications that you can sell with an access control or with an intrusion system into a commercial application. And selling intrusion into commercial applications isn't always about security. It isn't always about the burglar broke in, I want the alarm to go off, and I want to send the police. It's often about other things that we can do to make their employees and their customers more secure and to allow them to run their business more efficiently. So that closes the application part of the presentation. And I want to talk real briefly about some of the Bosch intrusion solutions that we have. This chart shows our B series control panel line, the B3512, 4512, 65, or 55 and 6512 panels. And you can see that they're differentiated by the number of inputs or points that they support, the number of users they support, whether or not they have access control. And all of these panels are available through some of our major distributors, such as Annexer, ADI, and ScanSource. So you have access to these panels right away. And as you're aware, we do have some higher commercial end panels too. We're, we'd love to talk to you about those, but those are available only to our direct customers. The nice thing about this line is that it's available to all customers through our distribution. Bosch considers our intrusion panels as an integrated security platform. So it isn't all about just the alarm portion. Of course, we integrate intrusion and in these panels, residential fire. But again, we talked about the way that access control is integrated and video is integrated. We also support home automation with Z-Wave and Zigbee home automation devices. So it really is the key of an integrated system. And again, when we're talking about intrusion, it sounds really simple, but it's really important. If nobody's here, the system is on. And if somebody's here, the system is off. That allows us to tell other systems somebody's supposed to be here or not, and they can react in different ways. If I'm the heating system, I'm going to adjust the temperature differently when somebody's supposed to be here or they're not. If I'm the lighting system, I'm going to turn the lights on or off. If I'm the camera, I'm going to react in a different way. So by using the intrusion system as the heart of the commercial system, it offers very simple control for that end user. There's a picture of the, diff of the uh, B series panels and you can see that it has that plug-in communication module for cellular. It has a USB on por port on board for programming and all Bosch panels today come along with a built-in ethernet connector for connection to the internet or a local network. We have a wide range of keypads that are available from our basic uh, B915 all the way up to our touchscreen keypad. And all of these keypads that you see are full function keypads. So they support up to 32 characters of text. They support multiple languages. They are full function keypad, but they do have different features based upon the keypad. We're not going to talk about every keypad here, although I'd love to. We have uh, this keypad here is our touchscreen keypad. It's the B942. There's also the B942W, which is white. And it uses a full color graphical display. What's neat about that display and that user interface it has a symbol, a symbol based user interface. It's kind of like running your system from your smartphone as opposed to running your system from a, from a flip phone. And we, had, we designed that user interface with the help of some of our automotive colleagues. You know, Bosch is one of the largest suppliers of the automotive industry in the world. And Bosch makes many of the displays that are in the dashboard of your car. You might not have known that. Well, those folks have spent a lot of time understanding what works and what doesn't from a user interface. We consulted with those folks when we designed this user interface, and the result is a user interface that customers really love. It just feels right. When they're operating it, it seems familiar, 
and, and is easy to use. And that's an important point for any, any system. Our panels allow you to support multiple languages. There's a list here. I won't read them out to you. But we can support any two languages at a time, and we can pick from those nine languages that are there. And what that allows you to do is display things in your customer's preferred language. It sounds very simple, but if I walk up to a keypad and it's displaying to me in a Hungarian, I don't know what it's trying to tell me. It might just try to tell me, you can't arm the system right now because the back door's open. But I have no idea because I can't speak Hungarian or read Hungarian. Well, vice versa, if someone's arming your system and they don't understand English and it's telling them in English they need to close the door before they leave and they don't understand, they're just going to leave and they're not going to close the door, which is a problem. So wouldn't it be nice if it displayed in their language? The way Bosch handles languages is by the user's passcode. So when that user enters their passcode, the system automatically switches to their language so that they can see, hey, the door's open. So they can go close the door and leave your facility secured when they leave. We talked about those personal notification texts and emails. Those can be in the customer's preferred language as well. Again, I'm an English speaker. It doesn't help me if I get a text in Hungarian. I'm not going to understand it. I'll have to go find my, my friend Gabor and he'll have to read it for me but I want to get it in English. And if I'm Hungarian, wouldn't I like to get it in Hungarian? Well, those things are possible. The plug-in communication modules with Bosch panels allow you to stay up to date with the latest technology. So we've recently released our LTE module for the Verizon network that replaced our CDMA module, which replaced the 2G modules. So as we grow and as we expand our cellular networks out there, the alarm industry doesn't have a lot of control over what the cellular industry is going to do. They're going to update their networks. They're going to make changes. We need to ride with that. And Bosch has found a way to make that very easy by having plug-in modules. So you simply plug in the module and update it to the latest technology. We have the ability to put our cellular modules out on the bus which makes it easier to get a better signal. And access control, we talked about that. So our systems support, uh, the systems we're talking about today support up to six doors, and it's one access control module per door, up to 100 users. And again, it's an integrated system, so that means that it's very easy to cause the alarm system to disarm when so someone swipes their card. It's very easy to keep them out of places they're not supposed to be by using that arming function that we talked about before. In our software options, we have RPS and RPS Lite. RPS is our remote programming software. That's the software that you'll use to, control, to program the system. RPS Lite is what your end users can use to add and delete passcodes and credentials. We have a user management module, which is a software that connects to RPS and allows users to manage credentials or passcodes along across multiple systems. We talked about BVMS, which is our video management system, but we also have many third-party integrations. And some of the most popular ones here are with Genetech, Milestone, and Linnell. If you know the guys over at Connected Technologies, they've done a very nice integration with our panels as well. So there's a lot of different options for how you can connect to the panel and control it. We have wireless. We have both our own wireless system, the Radeon brand wireless. We integrate with Innovonix EchoStream. And there's a lot of applications for this as well. Wireless is used where it's not practical or possible to get wired to a certain location and you need to put a wireless device there or you need a portable device like that arm disarm key fob that I talked about earlier to turn off the sirens when the kid goes out the back door. So wireless has a lot of applications even in a system that is mostly hardware. Detectors of course, I can't do a presentation without talking about Bosch detectors. And we have a wide range of detectors from our request to exit detectors, our seismic detectors, of course, our pet immune motion detectors are, are some of the best in the industry. And, and, and I'm sure you know that because Bosch is well known for our detectors.
Here's some helpful tools and take a screenshot of this and we'll be sending this information out later. The B-Series Intrusion site, that's a great way to connect and get your installation instructions, sign up for our service portal, get RPS so you can program. All these features are available from that installer site and it's a great place to go to get all the information you need on these B-Series panels. We have the Bosch Dealer app that helps keep you up to date on the latest with Bosch technology, our new features, our new benefits, our new products. The YouTube channel. If you're new to Bosch products or even if you know Bosch products well, you should find the Bosch YouTube channel. There's a ton of videos that help installation and programming and service for different little applications. How do I install this thing? You don't want to sit there and watch a half hour video on installing the, the panel, but a two minute video on how to set up the IP makes a lot of sense. And all that type of information is available on the YouTube channel. And of course, we need to talk about our training academy. Bosch has classroom courses as well as web based training that's that are available. If you go to the Bosch website and go to the training section, if you haven't already signed up for an account, sign up for an account. There's all kinds of courses that are available online, and that's also where you'll connect and apply for uh, space in one of our instructor-led courses. So that is the presentation. That's selling intrusion into commercial applications. I want to thank all of you for participating today and, and your attention. I, I, I hope that uh, technolo technologically we've worked okay. We had good sound and, and all of that. Again, this presentation will be available as a video. We'll send you a link to that after, the, after that's been com compiled. And also, if we have any questions, those can be input along our chat. I don't see a lot here, so I'm going to move on. If any of those came in, we will answer those later. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. and Thank you for your interest in Bosch products. Have a great day.